Which one of the following are you? Barney from How I Met Your Mother or Wesley from The Princess Bride? Or are you DJ Polly D from Jersey Shore or more Patrick Swayze in Ghost? In other words, are you a f boy or are you a man that's mastered the fine art of lovemaking? Hey. No judgment either way because look, f is great. You might be awesome at it and there's definitely a time and a place for that. But do you know how to make love? If you are unsure, I want you to know it's not your fault. It's not like anyone has ever taught you how to make love. In fact, the only person who would be qualified to teach you that is a woman. And if you think about it, it's really like not ideally her job to spend the time that she's having sex with you teaching you how to make love. Let me pause just to say that if you are sitting there and you're thinking, yeah, yeah, I totally know how to make love. I know, I know what you're talking about. I know the difference between sex and making love. I'm just gonna challenge you one more time. Do you though? But don't worry, I'm here to teach you. Because even if you think you've spent a ton of time making love, I guarantee that you still have some beautiful blind spots that I'm here to show you. And again, most women will not tell you what to do. What's missing is the making love part. What's missing is the soulful part. And if you really want, like if you really truly deeply desire a woman to be hounding you for sex if you want her to be knocking on your door sending you the text message initiating coming up to you after 20 years of marriage grabbing your junk and leading you into the bedroom because she wants it so bad then men listen up because i am about to spell it all the way out for you for example did you know that there are actually four distinct stages of making love I'm gonna to explain to you the stages. I'm gonna to talk to you about why each stage is important. And I'm going to talk about what you can do in each of these stages to be not just a better lover, but to actually be the best lover she has ever had. Pretend I slam a pop quiz down on your desk and it says, how does sex begin? I bet that 95% of human beings would say foreplay. Well, hopefully they would say foreplay, maybe not. They might say like, when I decide, I don't know. Love making though, my friends, begins way before foreplay. It actually begins with seduction. And that's true even if you're married. That's true if you've been with your partner for 35, 40, 50 years, if you have three children and one on the way. Sex begins with seduction. Say it with me, sex begins with seduction. At least great sex does, at least love making does. Let's dive into how step by step to make love to a woman like the world-class man that you are. Number one, master the art of seduction. If you already put a ring on it, why do you have to seduce her, right? Like it does seem silly at base, but you see, suction, seduction, suction, seduction is the art of staying interesting to your partner. It means playfully teasing, flirting, and inviting them into an erotic space with you. It means not just rolling over and tapping her with your penis, or for us women, it means not just going, hey, are we gonna have sex tonight or what? It means actually taking interest in making a sexual space and inviting your partner into it. Remember when you first got together, when you were first dating and you were like, showering and scrubbing really good and you were putting on your cologne and trimming your chest hairs and you were showing up to sex that was part of seduction when you texted non little things that you were interested in doing together maybe that evening that is seduction seduction means that you're not taking the relationship or your partner for granted. So how do you seduce her? Well, start early on, maybe even before you leave for work with a long kiss. One thing that drives me personally nuts is when I get those like little pecks, like they're cute, but I also expect those from my nieces and nephews. When my husband kisses me, I want pressure, I want depth, I want presence, and I want it to last for longer than Second, send her flowers or doing something else romantic for her on her lunch break. Let her know that you are thinking about her and that you are excited to spend intimate time together. All right, step two of four, warm her up with some expert foreplay. 
Foreplay is one of the most, I would argue perhaps the most, maybe even more important than anything else that you can do before sex. And one of the most forgotten about things that men, especially when you're in a long-term relationship, we kind of let this slack, right? But remember that the female body takes 20 to 40 minutes to fully fill up with blood. Imagine if it took you 20 to 40 minutes from the time that you were starting to get an erection to the time that you fully got an erection and were able to penetrate. That would change sex a lot, wouldn't it? That's actually how long it takes women to get fully aroused, fully turned on before penetration. One of the biggest reasons that women grow frigid, I hate to use that term, but like it's indelicate, but let's just call it what it is is because they've had a lot of sex before they were actually ready to. We call it premature penetration. When she allows you to penetrate her before her body's actually ready, it causes pain. And guess what? Her body remembers that. And then the next time that you go to penetrate her, she's like, oh, it's gonna hurt. Even if mentally she's super into it, her body's like, nah, man, that hurt last time because we weren't ready. Foreplay makes sex better for women. End of story. It makes sex more enjoyable, it decreases her chances of getting injured, it makes her wanna have sex more and more often, it increases her chances of reaching orgasm. And since we're talking about making love here and not just and not just having sex, let's talk about the actual significance of foreplay because if you think about what it means to make love, isn't it about treating your partner with tenderness and with care and like lovingly touching their body, not just for the purpose of having an orgasm? Foreplay by definition is any sort of kissing, touching, rubbing that gets you aroused for sex, but it's not PIV penetration. It uses a combination of more than just your body. Your words are actually part of your foreplay, the way that you engage energetically. Are you present with her or are you thinking about Starcraft or are you thinking about the stock market, but you're going down on her, but like really you're thinking about Bitcoin? It's more than just the actual presence of your tongue on a clitoris. It's your presence of yourself in the bedroom. Think of foreplay as sort of like almost the main event. It's foreplay is like the burger and then sex can be the french fries. <laughs> french fries are amazing. I would not want to have the burger without the french fries. Sometimes. Sometimes you would just have the fries. Anyway, that's what foreplay is. And I wrote a whole masterclass called She Comes To just on this that includes a whole step-by-step techniques guide how to do finger sex, manual sex, use your tongue, use your presence, use your whole body in order to arouse her and get her off. And you can check out my link to She Comes To in the description. Honestly, there's a whole like masterclass on just foreplay inside of She Comes To. Step three out of four, actual intercourse. And it is probably the most amazing thing ever. I mean, the idea, just the feeling of being inside of another person or having another person inside of you is amazing. I've dedicated my whole life to helping people enjoy just that. If you are enjoying this video, make sure that you are subscribed because this is what I do every single week. I want sex to feel amazing for both of you, but unfortunately it often doesn't. You know, there's a lot of reasons for this. One is porn. You know, a lot of guys learned how to have sex through watching porn, watching just pounding, 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 pounding for hours. Sex really isn't like that. Intercourse in the real world isn't like that. Those are like professional drivers on a trained course. And so if you are going to rock penetration, you've got to keep a couple things in mind. Number one, Stillness. If you are a longtime listener of this channel, you know I love stillness. Stillness is so important because it allows our bodies to calibrate to the feeling of sensation. You also can adjust how you're penetrating, different thrusting, shallow thrusting, different positions. The wonderful thing about intercourse, it is never the same every time that you do it. It changes. Women are like rivers. They are not lakes. The water of our bodies is always flowing, always changing. Literally throughout the month, our cervix moves. You may be able to do doggy style while she's ovulating, but not when she is approaching menstruation because women's bodies are like that. So you have to be able to attune to the situation because you're never crossing the same river twice. Adjust how you penetrate, recognizing the needs of her body, her desires, her specific preferences. That is how you do the intercourse portion of lovemaking perfectly by responding to what is actually happening in front of you. Which brings us to number four, aftercare. 
When you're done, you're not done, my dudes. Why? Women in particular, but men too, are at our most vulnerable after sex. Just because orgasms have happened, sex isn't over. In fact, think about how we even talk about sex. We say things like, finished. Oh, I finished. I'm done. He, I'm completed. Well, I don't think anybody says I'm completed. That, that's, that's something I would say. But we discuss it like it's over after ejaculation happens. You hop up, light a cigarette, turn the other direction, fall asleep. And if you are guilty of doing this, I ask you, please just stop. This is what leads women, especially to feeling used, taken advantage of, disconnected. It makes us not want to keep having sex because it's not over for us. You know, just because you quote unquote finished doesn't mean that we are complete with the lovemaking session. During sex, you are united, especially during penetration. Literally, you are inside of our body and then suddenly you leave our body. We go from this feeling of grand unison, like souls interconnected, the feeling of completion, to all of a sudden crashing back down to earth as an individual person alone without that feeling of completion, without the feeling of having someone inside of us. And this is why we often feel incomplete or exposed or vulnerable right after sex, the feeling of union to separation. And so aftercare is the tender act of looking after your partner's needs after sex. That can include hugging, cuddling, maybe it just means getting a dry towel to get her off of the wet spot or getting a damp towel to wipe down her sweaty body because you worked it out so good. Maybe it's a snack or a glass of water or in some cases I've heard of people like actually just throwing in a batch of chocolate chip cookies and then having chocolate chip cookies immediately after sex. I heard that story. It's changed my life. No one's done it for me yet. I hold out hope. My advice is that you plan ahead. You don't necessarily have to have cookies ready in the oven. You can. Think about what is going to meet this woman's needs after sex. And if you're not sure, ask her. Keep in mind that you have a partner in creating this experience and really think about it as a full experience. And maybe she doesn't need a whole bunch of aftercare. Maybe she rolls over and falls asleep. That's great, but give her the option and be available. And also, what if you need a lot of aftercare? Communicate, let her know that you actually need some tenderness and maybe some like light touches with her fingers and maybe if she could like play with your hair a little bit that would be great there is nothing wrong in fact tell me in the comments what feels so good for you after sex what is your favorite thing to do or what is the thing that you are going to do now that you've watched this video and you know that actually making love requires each of these four parts to actually be a complete process of love making. Love making is a fine art, my friends, and I want you to know how to do it all. A grown ass man should be able to move swiftly through these four stages and deliver an incredible sexual experience. And if you are not sure about your skills in any one of these four stages of love making, please check out my course, She Comes To for a primer and step-by-step, -step, including pro tips on each of these four parts, seduction, foreplay, intercourse, and aftercare. I designed it specifically for men like you to move from average Joes to total sex gods in no time at all. All right, my friends, I wish for you to master all four of these, be the best lover that she has ever had, provide ample orgasms, and make her feel gosh darn amazing from head to toe. I'm Caitlin V. I will see you here next week. Please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Bye-bye.